Hello and welcome to part 4 of our webinar series of how to create a form type. Uh, my name is Kwasi Moravi, I'm the customer support rep here at the IHR 365 team. And should you have any questions uh, during the meeting or during the webinar or after you watch the video, please feel free to message support at iTrack365.com and I will definitely get back to your email as soon as possible. Okay. So uh, just a little recap of what we've done in the last three parts. You know, um, we've created basic controls, we've complete, created an inspection, and we've created the form type form group shell. Um, this this webinar this week we will be talking about a bit more. I want to say complex controls, but in reality um, they're not as deep as an inspection or a cause analysis, and they're what we notice most of our clients use. So we're going to call them the complex common controls. So to begin, as always, you want to navigate to your form type. From there, you want to go to the form sections area, click here, and click new form type section. From there, we'll call the section con complex controls and we'll hit save to allow us to access the form types field feature. Now, the four form type fields we will, will be discussing the attack, item list, signature, and injury controls. Um, and then I will showcase some of our other complex controls, such as log, cause analysis, and checklist. I just won't be uh, showcasing how to create them. So, to as always, new form type field. The first field option, uh, we have two variations of it. We have attachments and user defined attachments and notes. Um, I'll begin with user defined attachments and notes and I'll go over the differences once we open the portal. We're going to name this field attachments, notes. And then we're going to scroll down to the show thumbnails option. And what this does is in the portal, let's say you post a picture or you attach an Excel file, um, it'll actually just show the, show the thumbnail of uh, what was attached. So we're going to say yes, just to try to showcase this in the portal. As always, hit save. Then we're going to navigate to our portal, open up our form group, then open up our form type and add new form. So, as always, when we're discussing um, complex controls such as inspection, we're going to add the form. Um, that way, Dynamics can render what is happening and what is going on. Uh, if you do not save it, you won't have access to use the form type field. And we see here that our attachments and notes um, form type field is showcasing. So, I'll quickly go over the note function. We're going to start with this little uh, text field here which we can expand if we are going to write a longer note. We're going to, you know, write this is a note. And if we just walk away, it actually won't save to the control. We have to click this little um, note button here. This thing will save and we see here that there's a subject associated, you know, there's comments. And once you, see the, once you see this created on column was filled, you know, you know that the note was saved correctly. The second thing we can do is open up attachments, call the subject attachments, if there's any comments, and then head over to select files. We're going to choose this uh, little cross icon, and we see here that there's a file name, a subject, the preview of the thumbnail, and uh, that little created on, as I mentioned earlier. So once you see that the grid is filling up, you can do a couple things. You can export that to PDF, um, which will just basically take the table in a PDF-esque file. So when you open it, you can share the screenshots with people or through Excel, which will just do the same thing, but open it up obviously in an Excel file. Next, we will be discussing the item list field option. So I'll hit form type field once more, scroll down to user defined item list, field name will be called item list. And then we'll click this little item list column configuration header. Um, what an item list is, is what you can think about it, um, is, a, is a mini series of form type fields. 
So we see in item one, the field type can be employee, employee field, account field, date field, uh, facility field, number field, text field, values, yes, no. Uh, there's so much that you can do with this item list, and it really helps if you're um, going to be talking about some of your equipment, some of your inspections, and so on. So we're going to call text, text one row, call it text. We're going to call this yes and no. You know, um, is this an item list? Question mark, field type. We're going to go for account, you know, account one. And then field type checkbox, you know, um, select if this is a checkbox. Okay. So what this does, we have up to 10 items that we can select. Um, and they can they don't have to always be unique. So if that's one checkbox, I can add another checkbox and I can add 10 checkboxes if I wanted to. Right. From there we'll hit general and we scroll down. We see here that the account view um, field was populated. And what this means is uh, we've talked about in the first uh, part of the webinar series, but it, it will allow you to um, either filter automatically uh, based on um, already created views such as active members, active accounts, and active accounts, um, or these little simple select, simple search will actually change the functionality of the account form type field. So we'll click simple search, hit save, and the last thing to discuss about these fields are the form type field options. Um, so what I'll quickly start with is I'll reload the page. And we see here that our item list um, was successfully populated and that there are four sections to the grid. Text, item list, account one, and select this is a checkbox. If we go back to the form type field options as an example, and we hover over account one, and then we go and hide this from the grid and hit save, we can then refresh the portal once more, scroll down, and then we see that the accounts um, option is not showing in the grid. From there, click the plus mark. You see, we can create text. We allow the yes or no. The account section is still available. So if you want to say institutions, for example. And we want to select the checkbox. From there, we click save and no, or save and new, sorry. Which clears all the filters. Text again, no. We will select a different company. And then we won't select it. And we see here that the, the grid will automatically update with every item list that we include. Now let's say um, for some reason you want to hide one of the fields you made, but you don't want to delete it in case you want to show it on a uh, separate status. As an example, we can go back to form type field options. And we actually just hide it um, from the form entirely. Obviously, I'm going to discard that because we want that on the form, but you have a couple options with this form type field option. And that is the item list control. Next, we will be discussing the signature control, which is called user defined signature. I'm going to call it signature. It's pretty simple um, field to make. But there's obviously a lot of uses we can do here. So we'll hit save, head back over to the portal, refresh the page. Scroll down to signature. Name signature. And then we can draw this box however we like. Uh, this obviously works in mobile, it works on portal, it works on tablets, however you want to do it. Now let's see you messed up your signature. You can just hit clear and then you know try again. Once it saves, you want to make sure it properly uploaded um, by the icon showing up on the bottom. Now the one thing to note with these complex controls, and I think you may have noticed already, is that I have never touched the save button on the left hand side. 
But if I refresh the page, we see that all the information that I've included in the form will actually auto save due to the complex nature of the controls. So let's say you're working on an item list and it took took a while um, and then the Internet crashes after you've submitted it. The form data should still be saved on the portal. Okay. And the last one I want to showcase how to create is the is, it's not a tougher control to create, but it definitely is one of our more complex controls. So we'll call the field option injuries. Um, for the view, we'll call it simple search. We'll hit save. And that form type field options, I'll quickly go over some of them. Um, if you look here, we have address, phone number, contract number, employee number, body parts, injury details, and a whole lot more. And at the bottom of the list, uh, we have option sets, text, date times, and multi option selects as well. So as an example, if I just open up text one, and I call this contractor name as an example. Hit show on the report. Click save. All right. We will then see this contractor name on the portal. Whereas we have text one, two, three, or two, three, four, five, which we have not set yet. Those will not show on the um, control until they are defined as something. All right. Um, so if I just click text two, hit save. I am saying that text two should not be part of the control. All right, uh, that's how you set up the injury control. And if I go over to the portal once more and hit refresh, all right, we add an injured person. So we have two options here. Um, with the employee selected, we can just click this little name option, click show all, and choose an employee. With the no non-employee option, we actually can just write down the name itself. Um, injury classifications, these are the ones that are out of box. Um, however, we can add new ones. So as we see here, exposure, illness, no treatment. Um, let's say one of the injury classifications is uh, your, your verbiage would be severe, for example. You can write severe. Uh, this part of the classification is uh, customizable. So we'll just click medical treatments. Uh, for address, phone number, contractor, none of these are required. All the one thing to know if it is required or not required is this little red asterisk here. So we'll go down with body parts. We can multi select. Oh, is it an occupational injury? What side is it? Left to right? So on and so forth. And if you go all the way down, we see that contractor name was selected, text two was selected, but the text three, four, five that we mentioned earlier do not actually show up. So from there, we can click save and close just to make sure it's uh, properly saved to the form. And uh, we see here that the grid is updated. And if you wanted to add more options to the grid so we can export to PDF, export to Excel, we would go through that form type field display option, as I mentioned. Uh, the one more thing to note is actually all of these fields are being are able to get pulled out um, from uh, from the system, whether you want to push it into Tableau, SSRS, Power BI, uh, these actually can be uh, removed and reported on. Cool. So that quickly runs over um, how, how to create the form type field options and how to briefly use them. Obviously, these are very deep and vast, um, the signature being less deep, whereas the injuries obviously has the most customization and control to it. Next, I will be showing um, some of our other complex controls, whether it be log and cause analysis. Load. Uh, we see here that this is a demo incident, so not all the fields are filled out, but it really showcases how you can use all the fields, uh, you know, to really get that form form type solidified and uh, done correctly. So we see. For one of them, for example, we have risk. Uh, we have assets, community impact, environment impacts, people impact. Uh, so how you would do this is you would select, you know, it's a negligible asset impact, and you know it's reasonably probable it might happen again, or a pretty high, pretty high chance of it happening again. We see the risk was given a four. However, if I change it, and you know, seven to thirty days of equipment or facility outage. For example, you know, someone did, uh, someone wired it incorrectly and it went uh, unnoticed. And we hit OK. We see here that it's a very critical uh, effect. And all these namings, conventions like high critical, 
um, all the impacts, all the probabilities can actually all be customized as well. Um, we have spill releases. You know, um, what was released? Let's say it was natural gas. How much was, how much volume was released off? How much was released on? How much was recovered? Right? Um, is there a manifest number? So on and so forth. And if you actually hit save, you know, um, it, the grid will update. And let's say you wanted to add a formula um, because let's say it's a uh, it's a spill that can be tracked of how much is released. You can actually add formulas to this as well. So there's a wide variety of options you have here with the spill release. Uh, we have motor vehicle information, property damage in, uh, information. Um, you know, we have uh, cost, we have cause analysis, which I'll mention as well. If we click this edit button here, you know, we have the uh, quality, for example, type of event, and all these will actually change depending on what you select. Um, from there, we'll hit type of event, edit, and you know, we'll say we can select all of them if you want to, but we notice that once we select it, this little red asterisk pulls up saying it's required to have some comments attached to it. So it just makes things simple. Should go three, four, for example. And depending on which ones you choose, uh, you know, the levels at the bottom will change as well. So we see here that the form actually automatically updated with it, and you can go through and explain every single one, but that's the idea. You click a little pencil sign, pop-up opens up, you select what you need to do, and add comments as well. And then if we go down to the administration section, uh, we can look at log, which um, we see here that the draft was created by new system support. It was assigned to new system support. It was started on this time. It took them two minutes to fill out the form. And then, you know, the preview status was also assigned to uh, support. Uh, demo owns the form, but it took them 237 days to, to push it onto the analysis section of status. Obviously, it's not ideal. You do want to finish a form within 237 days. And you can sort of see how the uh, form moved along and how nicely it moved along or how poorly it moved along. And finally, we have emails to see how many emails were sent out based on the form. Obviously, the iTrack system is vast. Nothing like this on the market. Uh, if you guys do want to know more information, like I said, please message support at neosystems.com. Follow us on LinkedIn. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And uh, so we can keep giving you guys this great content uh, to make sure that you guys are out there and staying safe. Should there be any questions, I will stay on the line for a bit. Otherwise, as I mentioned, please message support at neosystems.com. Thank you and have a great day.